Hi there, and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to use the Mastering Assistant in Logic Pro. This video is actually taken from my complete Logic Pro course. So if you're interested in learning music production in Logic Pro and me, then be sure to check out my complete course via the link in the description below this video. Okay, so let's get started with this tutorial. So Mastering Assistant was introduced in Logic Pro 10.8. This allows you to get your mixes sounding polished and clean, ready for streaming services, or wherever you want to upload or send your music to. So this is an instant way to get your music mastered in Logic Pro, and in this video I'll show you how to use this plugin and what all the different functions and features do. So if you're using Logic Pro 10.8 or above, you'll notice on your stereo out it says mastering, which is greyed out by default. We can view our stereo out via the inspector, which we can open and close with this button up here, or by using the shortcut I or we can view the stereo out on the mixer, which we can open and close with this button here, or by using the shortcut X. Okay, so now let's click to open the Mastering Assistant plugin. And when we open this, Logic Pro will analyze the track and will apply the processing. I'm going to now play this song back and I'm going to press the bypass button down here in the bottom right, which will bypass the effect of the Mastering Assistant plugin and you should be able to hear a difference with the effect enabled and bypassed. By the way, the song I'm using is an extended version of one of my songs called Earblock. So let's hear this back now. So the first thing you'll notice there is the song sounds a lot louder. Often people think a song sounds better because it sounds louder, and the mastering assistant will limit the audio and can make it louder. Just so you don't think it's better because it's louder, we do have this loudness compensation button down here in the bottom right of the plugin, which will match the volume of the processed audio with the original signal. So when loudness compensation is enabled, the volume level of the track will be the same when mastering assistant is enabled and disabled. So I'm going to play this back again and select Bypass to bypass the plugin, and you should be able to hear that the difference wasn't only the volume level. For now though, let's deselect loudness compensation and have a look at the other controls on this plugin. One thing to mention first is if you have cycle region selected, the mastering assistant will apply the mastering settings for that section. So I recommend doing this for the loudest section of your song, maybe the chorus. This will also make the analysis quicker, and I particularly recommend doing this if you have a section in your song that's very loud or heavy. That way you make sure your mastering settings sound good in this section, and the settings aren't overdoing it in the heavy or loud section of the song, and underdoing the settings in the quieter section of the song. So I'm going to apply the cycle region from bar 122 to 138 for this track, as this is the solo section of the song, which is the loudest part of the track. So we can click up here to select the cycle region, or we can enable or disable the cycle region by pressing this button up here, or by using the key command C. Now I'm going to press reanalyze section down here, and this will apply the mastering settings for this section. So if you reanalyze a section compared to analyzing the whole song, you may notice that the EQ section over here may have some different settings. We can also turn off the cycle region and reanalyze the whole track again if we wish by selecting Reanalyze. You'll notice when we have the cycle region selected, this button says Reanalyze Section, and when the cycle region is not selected, this button says Reanalyze. So this means it'll analyze the whole song when the cycle region is not selected. Okay, so now let's have a look at the EQ section over here on the left of the plugin. So when you analyze the song or section, there will be this auto EQ. You can select how much of this EQ curve you're going to apply to your audio with this slider here. You can see the percentage amount you've applied down here, and you can also option click on the slider to go back to the default of 100%. You can also adjust the EQ curve as well if you wish. You can adjust the low shelf and high shelf, and there's also a mid band that you can adjust if you wish. We can also see the frequency and gain amount down here for each of these bands. So I'm just going to play this back now and adjust some of these bands so you can hear the difference. So 
So if these bands, you can correct the auto EQ settings if you need to. You can also turn off and on the custom EQ settings with this button down here. You'll notice as well that when we play the track back, we have a spectrum analysis that shows us the EQ for the audio that's playing back in real time. I'm just going to turn on the cycle region again by pressing C. And now I'm going to play this back with no EQ changes. For this example, I'm going to deselect custom EQ. Now I'm going to bring the slider down to 0% and increase this drawing playback so we can hear the difference. It is quite subtle and many settings during the mastering process can be subtle, but mastering really is about adding these small changes together to improve the song or master. Okay, so that is the EQ section. Next, we're going to have a look at the character area, which is up here in the top left of the plugin. By default, this will be on the transparent character, and this is what we've been listening to so far. The transparent character is inspired by a modern and tight sounding compressor, and this character will color the sound the least out of all of the characters and is suitable for most genres of music. So let's just hit this back again. Let's now have a look at the clean character. And this character will give you a clean and punchy result. This character is good for any style of music that wants a clean master, but also wants a punchy sound such as EDM music or acoustic music. So let's hear this now. The changes between the different characters can be subtle, so I do recommend listening to these yourself with your own audio and see if you can hear the difference. Next we have Valve, and this is great for acoustic music or hip hop music. This character gives you a low deep end and a bright or crisp high end, and can give your music more of an analog or Valve feel. Let's hear this now. Then there's Punch, and this can give you more of an aggressive sound and will boost the mid-range, and this character is suitable for rock music. Let's hear this now. You'll also notice that the different characters have a different colour, so you can see the colours change on the EQ, text and dials, when we select a different character. For this song though, I'm going to select transparent as this affects the sound the least and is most suitable for all genres of music. I also like the sound of this transparent character for this song and this is also a good character for me to choose in case you're following along with me with a different song in a different genre. Okay, so now let's have a look at this dynamic section over here on the right. Here we have a limiter setup with a ceiling of minus one dB. So the audio cannot exceed minus one dB so we won't clip the audio as audio clips at 0 dB. In the True Peak meter over here, we can see that the loudest part of the audio is minus 1 dB. The True Peak meter displays the loudest audio, and we can click this number here to clear the maximum level. So if I play this track back again, you'll see this True Peak number appear on this display, which again will be minus 1 dB. For this meter, if the audio is approaching 0 dB, then we will see a yellow bar, and if the audio is exceeding 0 dB, then we will see a red bar, and for the rest of the signal, we'll see a green bar. So just look out for a red bar. If it's red, then you'll know there's an issue, as it will be exceeding 0 dB, and you want to make sure your audio is less than 0 dB to prevent any clipping of the signal. Okay, then we have this loudness knob, which changes the loudness of the audio. At the center position or at zero, the output will be around minus 14 LUFS. 
Minus 14 LUFS is typically where you want the target loudness for most streaming platforms such as Spotify or Apple Music. Not every song is for streaming platforms though, so you can adjust the amount of loudness with this loudness knob. And we can go back to the default of zero by option clicking. To the right of this, we have the LUFS meter. LUFS stands for loudness units relative to full scale. Here we have three meters, M, S, and I. M is the momentary loudness, so the loudness of what you're hearing in that moment. S is the short-term loudness, and I is the integrated loudness. The integrated loudness is usually used to measure the loudness of the whole song and to give the overall loudness of the song. To see the integrated loudness, we will need to press the start button down here. You could see there the integrated loudness was around minus 14. Then we have this LU range button down here, which stands for loudness units. This will display the loudness range when we play about the audio and press the start button. You'll notice when we press the start button, it turns into a pause button. And this will hold the last measured value and the loudness reading will be paused. Pressing this pause button might be useful if you want to pause the loudness range after you finish analyzing the loudness range of part of the song, for example. Okay, then we have this reset button and this clears the readings on the loudness meter. Pressing this reset button might be useful if you've made some changes and you want a new reading to see the loudness with the new changes or if you're looking at another song or audio track. Okay, so now let's have a look at the excite button. This will add some saturation to the upper and mid frequencies. Saturation is an audio effect that adds subtle harmonic distortion and character to the mix. This can enhance the warmth and presence of the sound and can give it that sparkle to your master. So I'm going to play this back now and enable and disable the excite button. It would be nice if you could select how much saturation you want to apply, but in the Master Assistant at the moment, it's just an on-off button for the saturation. For now though, let's just turn off the saturation. Okay, so that's the dynamic section. Next, let's have a look at the spread section. With this spread dial here, we can add width to the stereo image by moving the dial to the right. So when I move this dial to the right, you should be able to hear a big stereo width. I do recommend going easy on this dial and make sure on the correlation meter over here you're not in the negative or left hand side of the meter as this can cause phase cancellation between the left and right channels which you don't want. So generally you don't want phasing issues and if it's out of phase then it will not be mono compatible. So just make sure it doesn't go below zero in this correlation meter. You can also decrease the width of your mix by moving the spread dial to the left. You can also make the mix mono by moving the dial all the way to the left. Let me show you now. Hearing your mastering mono might be useful so you can hear what it sounds like if someone is playing your song on a mono speaker. 
I'd only put it in mono to test though, I wouldn't have the final export in mono, as it will sound better in stereo. With this dial, you can make your mix sound a bit wider or narrower, but for this example though, I'm going to leave it on zero. Okay, so that's the Mastering Assistant plugin in Logic Pro. It's a really useful tool for quickly mastering your music, so it's at the correct level for streaming sites, and it also gives us some EQ changes, character controls, and an option for adding saturation and stereo spread controls. This video was actually taken from my complete Logic Pro course. If you'd like to learn more about music production in Logic Pro, then I recommend checking out my complete course via the link in the description below. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.